Hello, it's time to update Atom Smashers. This is a nice little update. We've got uh, some UI improvements that are really nice, and we've got some new content. We've got a new level that contains three or four new parts, and they're all the super conductive, super cool parts. This is our latest level. I'm going to take you on a walkthrough of it. It's a straightforward level until the end, and then there's a little bit of a nasty twist. And that's sort of to get you in the mood for the final level, which will come out next week, which will be really bitter. It'll be really tough. Anyhow, if you haven't ever played the game before, this is going to be some high-level stuff. You're not going to be doing anywhere near as complex stuff in the early game. And if you have played the level before, maybe you want to give this a try before I show you how to do it. If you're still sticking around for my dulcet tones, anyhow, I will go ahead and take you on a walkthrough of this level. Now, whenever I am building a long uh, accelerator, I will put in as much of the content I'm going to need up front, rather than waiting. And the reason for that is pretty simple. When the pipes are put down, uh, and aside from RF chambers and klystrons, all these pipes carry a penalty, an MEV penalty. And uh, if the MEV is low, it's a percentage. So if the MEV is like 1, then a 10% MEV penalty is a 0.1 MEV. Who cares? But if it's running at like 50 GEV, then a 1% penalty, or a 10% penalty, is 5 GEV. And that's something I'd rather not lose. So I put all of this stuff up front, and I lose like 0.1 below, point, below 1 MEV. No one cares. It's very efficient. But it does mean that I have pushed all of our coolant down, 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 where we can't use it. Well, that's what the exchange stack is for. Now, I know that I'm going to need the liquid nitrogen first, and that's helium. So I've got the helium in the lowest slot, and I need nitrogen in the lowest slot. So, that's what stack exchanges are for. There we go. And, oop, now we have the coolant on top, and the waveguides below, and we are ready to get started. The single RF chamber is a nice, easy-to-use little toy, and it will get you going uh, up to about 1 GeV. Not quite 1 GeV, if you put three of them in a row. But it will also overheat your ni liquid nitrogen. Now, you can save that liquid nitrogen line if you'd like, but I'm not going to bother. I don't need to. There's no point. Uh, and we're going to move on to double RFCs. Now these double ones are a little bit more difficult to manage just because they're set up differently, but they do have a throttle, and they have a much, much higher maximum. So these guys are great for taking us uh, up into the low GEVs. So you can see that the setup is a little bit awkward, and you have to do this if you want us to chain them. That's fine though. Bring it up to the mid-throttle, and we get up to 5 GeV. But we are overheated. Our liquid nitrogen is going to not be recoverable. So if you want to do some cooling in there, you can. Um, I'm okay with it being burned out. We can play with some superconductive RFCs. Now this is where the game really starts to get uh, off the ground. But the problem is, it requires deviation data. Well, in that case, we're going to need a sensor rig. need that. Oh, look, it takes us up to 19 GeV. Nice. Again. Oh. So it does output the data that it needs as input, but we have to juggle the stack a little bit because otherwise they're just in the wrong order. There we go. No problem. That little stuttering you heard is because I put in hot pipe when I extended it, and it takes a moment for the hot pipe to cool off. Hmm. We can even get the helium back out, but it's very, very close to its maximum temperature. And we are at 71 GeV. Neat! We only need 65 GeV. So let's go ahead and... Oh, it's a pinhole collider. Well, first things first, the pinhole collider um, needs red energy, so let's go ahead and just uh, get ourselves a heavy power cable in here just so that we can test this out. 
too scattered. I knew it. It does take glycol as input, but that's not mandatory. The tunnel is so cold that there's no possible way to overheat. But we do need to bring it down. We need to make it so that it is uh, a lot more um, focused. And that means that we'll need to use a quad pole magnet. Now, the quad pole magnet demands deviation data and a heavy power connection uh, and a energy data. Well, we have our deviation data, right? How about our power connection? How are we going to deal with that? We don't want all of these yellow wires. We'll store one of them away for later use, and then we'll go all the way back to the beginning of the tunnel and turn one of them off. So, we are in the wrong order, which means we need to pull this down and then pop it up. And we get ourselves some deviation data. Oh, we're at too high of a throttle. Let's bring our throttle down. So here, we need deviation data from pipe minus one and MEV data from pipe minus four. One, two, three, four. MEV data. But it is definitely in a bad position. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop our, our helium off here and then we're going to push this guy onto the stack. But it's going to be a little bit tight, so we're going to do it nice and fast. And the easiest way to do this is actually to bring one of these power cables down. This is the kind of juggling you're going to have to do in the late game where you have to figure out the best way to get these cramped little things in the, in the, into the proper arrangement. And I said that we were going to need one of these yellow wires, and that's because we're not going to be using this one. So then what we do is we pull this down, and we exchange it, and then we pop, and then we, oh, we are out of space, just a little bit too little. How can we deal with this? I need to get this blue guy down, but there is no space to do it. What if I exchange and then pull? Nope, that's not going to work. What if I exchange and then pop? Um, bring this power back out. Sorry, I actually haven't haven't done this one before on camera, and I know that it's possible, but I've kind of forgotten how to do it. So if I pull this. Oh, there we are, that's how I did it. So now I've got this blue guy in the background here, and all I really have to do is bring him down and leave him here. I don't want to exchange it, I want to cancel it. There we go. So where is our blue output? Here he is. That's good. Oh, that's right, we need to do a little bit of uh, tomfoolery here, like so. tomfoolery, like so. And a little bit more tomfoolery, like so. Ah, look, it's backwards. It's all in the wrong order. Ah, that's okay. We just exchange. And then pop. Uh, nope, nope, sorry. Not quite right. Exchange, and then Hear it growl. <laughs> so that is about as hot as uh, as as I've said the liquid helium allowed to be. Uh, but we uh, do have a problem. We are short a red power cable. The pinhole collider requires red power, and we don't have any. So we are going to have to use this heavy cabinet, bring up some red power, and then we might as well just stick the pinhole collider in down here. Lots of red power should should work fine. Yay! So this is how you do it. And aside from that little stumbling block where I couldn't figure out how to get this blue thing to work because I was too excited and tried to pack it into it early, it all worked out fine. And of course it's all got sound effects now.
Anyhow, I hope you download it and play it. Give me uh, give me your thoughts if you do. Um, this is the major UI improvement, so you can see what the heck's going to happen when you press these buttons. And I think, I hope, it'll make your tasks a lot easier to do. Thanks for your time, and have a good weekend.